Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon and warm welcome to Hansa Matrix Investor webinar. Today we are hosted by the CEO of Hansa Matrix, Ilmar Sosmanis, and CFO Mars Matsievskis. As always, we will start with company's presentation, which will be followed by questions and answers session. Therefore, you are kindly invited to participate by typing your question in the questions box, which can be found in the settings panel zone on the right side. Ilmar, Mari, I invite you to start the presentation. Yeah, so hello everyone. Uh, welcome, uh, welcome to our Q1 results webinar. And uh, 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 today we will be presenting jointly myself, uh, myself and Maris Motsievskis. And uh, let's start, uh, let's start the presentation. So executive summary, uh, first starting about business trends. Uh, of course, uh, things, things uh, are the same. Nothing specifically changed last over last uh, quarter. So uh, there have been two main trends, or three main trends. One of them is the fact that uh, remote, remote data connectivity for business work studies have been demand have been growing, and this is very strong. So uh, all businesses that are uh, st stimulated by this demand uh, are growing, uh, including uh, our our segment, one one, one uh, sector of our products. At the same time, uh, COVID-19 vaccination program uh, have rolled out uh, that uh, expected to reduce operational challenges, not all, not uh, not only at our sites and, and our locations, but also for our customers and uh, globally for for uh, businesses. And uh, we we believe we believe that the demand for manufacturing services will be uh, much higher next coming 12 months uh, because the travel hopefully will be possible and meetings with the potential uh, meetings potential customers would would again start take place uh, safety issues are still uh, and supply chain disruptions are still the factors that will improve business performance for the company in 2021 yes and and uh, still global component shortage continues no big news at least uh, we've been quite successful in in fighting that but but uh, but any, anyhow you have to um, uh, have to take in account that uh, uh, growth of business is kind of contained <laughs> by this by short component shortage and and kind of lead time increase uh, q1 summary uh, year to year sales grow 12 12% very good EBITDA level for Q1, 1.24 24 million, which um, which gives us 21, which reports us 21.3 EBITDA margin. A Q1 net profit decreased by 0.2 million by one-off provisions, uh, one from uh, writing off uh, or increasing increasing EB warrant liability, uh, based on the fact that share price have grown. This is this is one of one of uh, one of um, a decrease of uh, net profit. So basically, Q Q1 revenue was 5.83, uh, which is plus 12. EBITDA is 1.24, which is plus 181 percent. If you, you just have to remind that uh, last year Q1 and Q2 was uh, heavily affected by COVID panic, panic, and all kind of difficulties. Maybe the margin stands very high in this period. So, uh, so comparison with peers is usually we are doing comparison of mar mar margins and margins and and um, other indicators and and this quarter consumer exhibit the margin was actually the highest among industry peers. Uh, enterprise value peer uh, peer range was 7.2 up to 13.4 EBDS and Hansomatics here is on on low side so so uh, expecting that that it could grow it could grow so the as you can see if the margins over last over last uh, 12 months TTMs are uh, we uh, for Hansmatics is 16.2 and next is 15.7 and anyhow two peers at 10.7 10 so uh, Q1 results of 2021 in detail will be presented by Maris so Maris Flores is yours please 
Uh, thank you, Wilmars, and hello, everyone. Maris here, CFO of the company. So, in the first quarter of uh, 2021, the company revenue amounted to 5.83 million euros, uh, which uh, is a 12% year-on-year increase, and also 5% increase as compared to previous quarter or fourth quarter of 2020. Uh, going further. Uh, in first quarter of uh, uh, this year, three main regions to which uh, we provided uh, manufacturing services were Baltic states with almost 60% of total, uh, Nordics 20% and the rest of EU countries uh, 14% of total. Uh, services provided outside of EU this quarter were 8% of the total revenue. And uh, revenue was growing in Baltics and outside EU this quarter on year-on-year -year basis uh, due to good client performance in data networks and IoT sectors, while uh, sales decreased in Nordics and the rest of EU. And then going further, uh, revenue by market sector in Q1 2021. Uh, two main revenue sectors were data networks uh, products with uh, 50 3% of total and industrial sector with uh, 32% of the total sales. IoT, optics and photonics and other product sectors were in the range uh, from 3 to 8% of total revenue. Uh, in first quarter of uh, 2021, revenues in uh, data networks and IoT sectors increased significantly, uh, while the other sector revenue this quarter contracted on a year-on-year basis. A sales increase in data networks is explained by the strong demand in the sector due to the increased remote work and other remote connection necessities as a result of a COVID-19 situation. And then about uh, profitability uh, in, in, in uh, Q1 2021, the company reported a BDA in amount of 1.24 million euro uh, increasing by 181% on year-on-year -year basis as the company recovers from COVID-19 impact in the first quarter of 2020. Net profit amounted to 45,000 and, as Ilmars mentioned, was influenced by EIB warrant uh, liability fair value provisions. Uh, without these provisions, the profit would amount to 250,000 euro in, in this quarter. EBITDA margin was 21.29% uh, and net profit margin was 0.77%. And uh, yeah, for the trailing 12 months results, in the uh, last 12 months, uh, the revenue amounted to 23.2 million euro and EBITDA reached uh, 3.9 million euro with margin, EBITDA margin reaching 16.7%. Uh, the company in the last 12 months still operated with small net loss, which is explained by COVID-19 impact on the business in Q2 of 2020, EIB warrant provisions, EIB loan interest provisions, losses from associated, com associated company Lightspace equity investment, but uh, is expected to improve in the coming quarters. And now I give floor to Ilmars to continue. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Mari. I, I wanted to uh, just uh, focus, put everyone's attention that EBITDA levels uh, exceeding 1.2 million in, in a quarter have been uh, consistently Q3 last uh, year and Q1, which shows really change in uh, structure structure of our business, so being bigger amount going to data network data network products uh, that that's that's clearly impact of covid because <laughs> some other businesses been have been uh, kind of uh, limited at the performance right now so update on other activities uh, starting uh, one one decision been taken for reporting that based on the fact that most of r and d services uh, kind of are uh, integrated into light space operation and uh, and uh, third party businesses in in covid period in r and d been really reduced to to practically nothing 
So we decided to currently stop reporting uh, R&D revenues as R&D performance as it is is uh, really uncertain whether this activity will uh, or on what level this activity will continue after the period ends. Uh, this will still be uh, provided uh, as a complementary to core business for customers that uh, are our uh, long-term customers in, in manufacturing side. Uh, so it's it's uncertain what will happen later. So for that reason, we are we don't see there is a, any a big big added value in reporting that. We can return for that if, once once the situation changes. Uh, investments during Q1, uh, uh, company reported 140,000 euro investments in 2021 Q1. And uh, also due to situation, COVID uh, investments are mostly carried out to maintain manufacturing equipment and other assets. Uh, and uh, from other hand, we've been quite well uh, invested before COVID started. So there is uh, no uh, no any any urgent need to increase increase equipments. Uh, however, we consider that need will 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 grow, will raise after after the period goes to end. So, uh, investments in associated companies and subsidiaries in Q1 2021. Uh, since um, since Lightspace Technology have received the European European funding, there were no investments made into uh, into Lightspace by Hansa Matrix. Uh, also, that that's true in for Q1 2021. As a, as of end of Q1 2021, investment. Accumulated investment in light space technology amounted to 8.67 mil million euros, where 4.96 is convertible loan and 3.71 is equity equity part of the investment. Uh, Zinatne Spark, 68,000 euro investments in Q1 form in of convertible loan uh, to for um, for industrial estate project maintenance at the airport. As of end of Q1, uh, investment in Zinatne Spark totaled to 2.34 million. And 2.04 million capitalized uh, uh, for asset uh, asset creation cost and 0.36 million uh, share uh, share acquisition goodwill. So that's a summary. Uh, business development. Some words uh, related to light space technologies. Uh, where where what's what's the what's the status of the uh, of the business in Q1 2021. Uh, there was continued uh, work on marketing or market communication and and uh, a sales department in light space added two more partnership uh, partnerships in medical surgery and robotics sector both are from us uh, there is strong interest uh, to use this type of products also product development work continued to design new concept best we believe best of best in class headset ig2000 for industry use uh, also, uh, in parallel with that, uh, industrialization and conversation and and, uh, and product uh, design completion uh, comes uh, end of this year, and we're planning to start manufacturing later in the year 22. Start um, like uh, well, Q1 2022. Uh, further up to 1.7 million euro equity investment by ESC fund. Oh, sorry. Is expected to be signed or received by Lightspace as blended financing contribution, probably next quarter or this or next quarter. Is there is uh, there is some slight delay in that process. So uh, significant events uh, in 2021 Q1. First of all, it was uh, first of important uh, events was opening a new manufacturing plant in Ventspils campus. Uh, which uh, which is uh, arranged as 10-year lease agreement with Ventspils uh, Freeport Authority with total area 4,600 square meters, which would double existing Ventspils manufacturing campus box build and generally uh, floor space capacity. And uh, already announced earlier, uh, company started CEO transition process a month ago, and uh, it, Janis Sams, COO, is to become CEO in Q2 2021. That was the news. Uh, Janis Sams is ex has extensive experience in managerial roles in electronic industry, including Schneider Electric, and uh, we believe he is uh, he he is very well 
positioned to carry forward a CEO job for this company. Uh, Ilmar Sosunis and myself, I'm, I am staying as a largest shareholder and uh, will work from the like uh, from the council, uh, Francel, a position and will focus further focus in uh, CEO uh, being be, uh, continuing to work as CEO for Light Space Technologies as founder and, and currently operational CEO. And uh, also here, a significant event we will announce later today. With announcement immediately after the webinar that uh, a position being uh, appointed, we received all regulatory approvals. But yesterday and, and, and from today, Yanis Sams is confirmed as a new CEO. And congratulations to Yanis if he listens. <laughs> and so here it is. And uh, I'm, I'm giving this presentation as a, <laughs> my, my large job on CEO, a CEO position. So significant uh, events after reporting period. Uh, annual um, uh, annual general meeting planned for May 26, 2021, and the following key items will be discussed and decided: approval of the 2020 financial reports, uh, dividend payout three three cents per share, or 54.9 thousand euros, appointing of an auditor, changes in supervisory board, and uh, other other items connected to all, all, all this plan. So that's uh, probably completes uh, our regular part of presentation and uh, we are welcoming your questions. Uh, Mar Ilma, Marta, Marta, thank, you for the, thank you for the presentation. Now let's proceed with questions which we received during the webinar. But before, kind reminder to those who haven't yet submitted their questions that you can still do it in the questions section in the settings panel zone. So the first question, which value added products particularly helped to achieve such strong EBITDA margin in Q1 2021? Do you expect it to continue in the near, ter near term? Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, this is the whole sector. Actually, as you can see from our general, uh, general, general data, that uh, whole data network sector contributed to that as well as some strong uh, products in industrial part, but mostly this data network products, including products for, uh, for base stations, uh, base stations and data routers. Uh, yes, yes, we expect it to continue in near term. Uh, however, you have to, uh, we have to uh, take in mind that some disruptions can happen or uh, on, the, on the supply, on the supply side of components and, and they could hold back maybe uh, further, uh, kind of higher growth here, but uh, we believe we believe that its impact won't be that that big as it, it might look. That, that's follow. That's answer. Hopefully, I answered you. Thank so you. The answer is yes. It will continue in near term. Okay. Thank you. Next question. In Q1 report, you mentioned that light space production could start only in 2022. Does it mean that you will start with IG 2000 then, or you will start commercial production of IG uh, 105 product platform already this year? Uh, yeah, yeah, good point here. Uh, good point here. In a, we let's say let's say product called IG 1005 was developed last year to the concept device, and. Uh, as such, it has uh, some 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 uh, uh, kind of uh, technical issues with it, uh, which actually makes quite complicated to industrialize that. So uh, instead of maybe going in market with with that product, it would not be successful in uh, because it was mid dimension wise too large and 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 not not really developed for manufacturing. We decided to to uh, put on, on that on shelf and go for next product, IG2000, which would be a higher image quality, uh, higher resolution, and more compact product, and and move that as soon as fast as possible towards commercial production. Thank you. Next two questions are regarding EIB. So the first one, do you plan to revalue EIB variants on a quarterly basis going forward? 
answer is yes, we already done that before, but because of the uh, because of the fact that uh, uh, it was it was uh, the, the kind of uh, capitalization or, or price share prices uh, jumped uh, high up uh, in end of December. Actually, the uh, actually the revelation revelation in in Q1 <laughs> did, did bring big 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 figure basically for the or it was quite a useful like. A, uh, painful maybe for the figures, or depends how you look at this, of course. Uh, so it was the the big big jump up was this quarter. Uh, it of course depends on a, on a well uh, share valuation. Answer is yes. We we've been doing that before, but it was not noticeable because the value did not grow so fast as it happened in in uh, December. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Next question. Do you plan to use the rest 5 million euros of EYB investment facility? Considering the variance pricing, the first tranche turns out relatively expensive funding source in case EIB decides to use the variance. Uh, I cannot answer you this question. It's uh, to be decided. We are having uh, the period of uh, availability comes to end and we have to decide very soon now and uh, the rest uh, rest is slightly differently structured it's not warrant based it's based on a fixed uh, fixed interest uh, yeah but um, from other hand uh, from from other hand uh, first tranche uh, allowed us maybe to do certain things uh, that we won't be able to otherwise so and maybe this is justified uh, justified uh, use of these funds but yes, you are right. Uh, if, the, if we are successful with the first tranche and company value grows, <laughs> then it becomes expensive <laughs> at some point. But um, that's kind of uh, essence of this tranche because we don't have any, it's in, it's, it's, it's so-called equity type of, uh, uh, debt equity type of instrument, which is exactly used for the purpose of debt funding. And, and EB of course shares the risk with us. Mm -hmm. If I may add, if I may add, it's a it's unsecured quasi equity type financing. In and anyway, if you compare it to market levels, then it's uh, comparably cheaper than the market average. I mean, our solution. Thank you. Next question: Is there going to be third management board member, or it continues with two members? Uh, there will be announcement after this webinar. There will be four, there will be all, overall four management board members. Uh, but uh, yeah, for those who are interested in this, please wait till the till till the news release after webinar to, to tell exactly who who is appointed to the board. There will be four four board members. Mm -hmm. Do you expect to book first revenues for manufacture of product EIG? 2000 already in 2021. Uh, for uh, going into 2021, we expect to book revenues, but not for the for for the manufacturing product. Uh, we are planning to book some revenues for doing a joint a joint product development work, which is use will be using IG2000 prototypes, uh, but regular regular production. Again, we'll be in, in few phases. First phase will be pilot series, uh, beginning of 2022. Uh, and pilot is needed for the reason this goes into medicine. And this pilot series products will be sold as development kits. And in parallel, uh, products will go into, into approval process, a regulatory approval process for CE mark and in, for medicine and also for FDA approval for US market should take probably half year or so so and uh, only at the end of 2022 we expect to sell that and to into healthcare directly into hospital so before of that it will be like r d units and and uh, product development uh, units uh, that's normal situation and uh, you are still if you're buying product from from companies like magic leaf or, or or microsoft you still can have package development kit or design kit that's pretty usual for first year of manufacturing. Thank you.
When do you expect Lightspace technologies to achieve sufficient sales volume to break even? I think we are planning in our uh, in our book uh, in our forecast. We are planning that year to 20, 2023, end of year 2023. In two years. Uh, in two years' time. Thank you. Uh, so all questions currently are answered. Uh, recording of the webinar will be available in the Nasdaq Baltic YouTube channel and in company's announcements. Gentlemen, thank you for the presentation and for all answers given. Participants, thank you for joining and participating actively. Until next time. Uh, yeah, thank you everyone who listened to us till the end and, and thank you for listening for me for, for this whole period and probably uh, it's last time I'm presenting. So, uh, Maris, thank you for you too. Bye.